to um, tonight's meeting of the licensing committee on the 23rd of June 2022. Um, just to remind members, uh, this meeting is being recorded to be streamed at a later date. Um, we'll get straight into the agenda. Um, apologies for absence. I've received apologies from Councillor Marie Bailey, Councillor Danny Cook, Councillor Chris Cook, Councillor Moira Greaterix, Councillor Sam Smith, Councillor Peter Thurgood, Councillor John Wade, and I believe Councillor Jan Wadrup. And I believe everybody else is present, so we'll move on to agenda item number two which is the appointment of vice chair um i would like to nominate councillor tina clements uh can i get a seconder for that seconded by councillor jeremy oates all those in favor that's unanimous thank you congratulations tina um agenda item number three is minutes of the previous meeting um, can I move them uh, minutes and uh, look for a seconder, please? Second those, Chair. Seconded. Uh, I'll sign them as a true record. Um, any declarations of interest from anybody? No? Okay, we're moving to the main part of the agenda. So, uh, agenda item number five. And this is the statement of principles um, for the gambling policy. And I'm going to hand over to Wendy Smith um, to introduce this report. Hi, so this is the um, gambling policy. So the Gambling Act 2005 requires local authorities to have a gambling policy or statement of principles, which lasts for three years. And so this is proposed for 2022 to 2025. The previous policy was extended last year for a further two years as new legislation was expected um, due to a government review of gambling. However, this hasn't been forthcoming. We've therefore decided to bring to committee a new policy for three years. Um, and in this time, if new legislation does come into force, we will review this policy and amend if necessary. So the recommendations of this report are that the committee agree to issuing of the new gambling policy and statements of principle for consultation and the consultation responses be brought back to committee for consideration later in the year. Thank you, Wendy. Has anybody got any questions uh, on the report at all? No? Okay. Um, so we've got recommendations um, there. Uh, have we got a mover for the recommendations? Do we need a mover? Do we need a mover? I don't need a mover, do we? No. no. So we don't need to do anything there. Just note them. Yeah. Okay, so we'll just need to we'll just need to note them. So we'll just note them recommendations. Um they'll go out to consultation and then come back to committee first. Yeah, committee yeah. and then full Yep, that'll then come back to committee and then full council. Okay. Uh so uh we will move on to agenda item number six, which is the Hackney Carriage Fair Increase. Um just before I introduce uh, I, I get Wendy to introduce this report. I'll just um, bring members' attention to um, the fact that we've got new recommendations um, for this report, which have been handed out to you all. Um, this is because of uh, what did we say? It was it's just an issue with the constitution? It, because it's an executive function. Okay, cabinet. so because it's an ex executive function, it needs to go through cabinet. So I'll, I'll let Wendy introduce this. So this report relates to an application by Tamworth Hackney Carriage and Private Hire Association. Uh, they've sent a letter in um, to us requesting an increase in fares set by the authority. So these fares relate only to Hackney Carriages, not private hire, as operators set their own rates. So in Appendix 3 of the report details the fares that they're proposing, and uh, Appendix 4 shows a comparison of those fares with what we currently have and what's proposed. Um, Appendix 5 also shows you a National League table for Hackney Carriage fares and TBC's position before and after the proposed increase. What I would say to you is that Appendix 5 does make it look like Tamworth Borough Council would be significantly expensive with its taxi fares. However, most local authorities find themselves in a similar position to us, so I suspect that that League table will significantly change within the next year. 
the REP recommendation therefore uh, has been amended uh, since the report um, as we've stated so uh, this is an executive function and therefore committee is asked to note and uh, recommend to cabinet to consider the application from the association okay thank you wendy has anybody got any questions on that at all councillor jeremy oates uh, thank you could we just clarify um in terms of the recommendations um particular rec recommendation of three uh, this if no objections are received um can somebody explain to me how how the process of of that works in terms of consultation or re uh, or receipt of objections is it a is it free for all or, uh, or or can i just get upset one night and send an email in yes it does go to public consultation so it is open to any member of the public or obviously association or other drivers to put in an objection um, <clears throat> it goes into the local press for a consultation period of 14 days and then it will go back to cabinet if no objections are received or if um, objections are received then delegate authority to the assistant director in consultation with the chair to consider those objections does that help to clarify Thank you, Rebecca. Uh, any further questions at all? Okay. Less of a question, but more of an observation. Um, I mean, the taxi drivers have gone through a very difficult time. We've had two years in lockdown, and now we've come out of lockdown, and we're, we're all facing escalating costs. And from what I see here against what's present and what's proposed, I'll be honest, I wouldn't be surprised if we're back here again in less than a year to discuss further increases. So, from what I see at the moment, this is reasonable, and I'm in support of it. Thank you, Councillor Dorn. Has anybody else got any questions, comments? There's no further questions. I'm looking for a proposal and a seconder for the recommendations. Proposed by Councillor Steve Doyle, seconded by Councillor Kingston. Okay, uh, all those in favour? That is unanimous. Thank you, everybody. Uh, so. We'll move on to agenda item number seven, which is delegated powers for urgent revo revo revocations or suspensions to taxi licences. I'll hand back over to Wendy for this one. Thank you. So this report relates to uh, emergency delegated powers. Section 61 of the Local Government Miscellaneous Provisions Act 1976 allows local authorities to suspend and revoke taxi licences. There's currently no provision to delegate immediate revocations and suspensions to officers to address issues of public safety, but also to fast track the reinstatement of any licences. It's therefore requested that the licensing committee recommend to full council that they delegate the power to immediately suspend and revoke to the assistant director um, of growth and regeneration, head of environmental health, chair and vice chair of licensing committee in addition to adopting a fast-track procedure to re-licence. Thank you, Wendy. Uh, any questions or comments from members? Councillor Oates. Thank you. In terms of um, the, the points on page 65, uh, A to E, um, and the, the paragraph beforehand uh, talk, talk, talks about the situations where an immediate suspension uh, may be warranted and there's a list there allegations of violence allegations of indecency uh, and, and so on and so forth um, could you very briefly run me through how that will be dealt with and also what sort of um, God God forbid we get any but what sort of figures are we anticipating in terms of uh, of workload here and the reason I say that is be because of the word allegation there's a there's a, a, a wide open field there and, and we don't know what we're going to get until after there's been investigations and, and so on so i just wanted to, to understand the process and the, uh, and and the i suppose the, the the levels that we might might expect or anticipate for a borough uh, of our size 
Um, right, yes, so this was actually covered in um, the licensing training that we recently provided to, to members and was quite a bone of contention actually because um, allegations do make people nervous about whether they're going to be true or not. So the training that we actually had and my understanding and experience in licensing is your primary role as um, councillors is to safeguard public safety. So that has to be paramount to everything. So an allegation is enough for you to be able to suspend somebody or for officers to suspend rather than wait for an actual conviction. So this is because an allegation and then anything that proceeds further for police would have to be on the criminal basis. You're issuing licenses and considering on the balance of probabilities on a civil basis. So the burden of proof is a lot lower. That's why we want to also put in a fast track process so that obviously if the allegation proves to be false, then enough, uh, then somebody can be reinstated their license quite quickly and doesn't have to go through the whole process of be, being re-licensed. Um, but the primary yeah. responsibility for the local authority is to ensure public, public safety. So allegations can lead to obviously revocations, not just waiting for police convictions. Does that help at all? Any other questions? No? We've got recommendations on this yet. Okay, so there's... Uh, there's Sorry, I didn't read the recommendations. Okay. So we've got recommendations. Um, so two recommendations. Uh, one that the uh, committee recommends to full council. Um, the full council delegates um, powers to the assistant director of regeneration uh, or head of environmental in consultation with either the chair or the vice chair um, to immediately suspend or revoke uh, Hackney Carriage Private Hire uh, license if it's considered necessary in the interest of public safety. Uh, and also, number two, that the licensing mm -hmm. committee recommends to full council that a fast track procedure uh, be adopted to re license those drivers who have had their license revoked but have subsequently been found to be fit and proper uh, to perform their duties. So um, just look for a mover and seconder for that. Uh, moved by Councillor Kingston, seconded by Councillor Tina Clements. All those in favour? That is unanimous. Uh, thank you, everybody. Um, and that brings us very quickly to the end of tonight's agenda. Um, I would like to just thank you all for taking the time to attend this evening, uh, and I look forward to seeing you all at the next meeting. Thank you very much.